Welcome back. As promised, we have two companies joining us now and very interesting ones because a lot of them have created wealth for shareholders. Uno Minda is one of them. Very strong numbers coming through uh, from the management this time. The revenue has seen a 34% growth. The margins have also expanded by 80 basis points as some commodity costs have cooled. In another positive, Uno Minda has also bagged a new 300 crore order for EV products, for electric vehicle products. Sunil Bora, the group CFO of Uno Minda, joins us on the show to take some questions. Uh, Sunil, thanks a lot for joining in. I want to first start with, uh, you know, what the nine-month performance has been, which is very strong this quarter around. Uh, it's a 40% revenue growth that you've seen in the last uh, nine months of the year. Tell us, how will you end the year and what is the prognosis for FY24 in terms of growth? Right, Sonia. So, as you rightly mentioned, that uh, for the nine-month period, we have grown our top line by 42% and also have done better in terms of uh, EBITDA, which was, I would say, as guided by the company uh, at the beginning of the year. I remember uh, speaking to you when we said our annual guidance is around 11 to 12% uh, while we are at the lower range of it. But I am happy that we are uh, still, despite uh, some headwinds from a segment in which we operate, we are able to deliver that kind of uh, margin uh, within the guidance. And in terms of our uh, EBITDA also, if you see, uh, absolute number also is higher by almost 51%. And the attributable profit is uh, almost uh, more than uh, 1.4 times at uh, 430 crores compared to 230 crores. <coughs> so uh, overall, uh, we are very, very satisfied with the nine-month performance. And we do expect the Q4 uh, to be in line with what we have been able to deliver in Q3 or maybe marginally better. So overall, uh, we are very, very uh, optimistic uh, in, for the full year basis and, and the growth momentum which we have built over the last few years, we expect that to continue. In terms of FY24, uh, as you know that we normally don't give a, a revenue guidance because uh, the 90% of our revenues actually is uh, directly line fitment. So we don't comment on the industry volume. So whatever industry grows, uh, you know, we have been speaking consistently that our goal is we should deliver at least 1.5x or more of the industry growth. And I am pretty confident that we should be able to deliver even more than that in the short term and in the medium to long term. Our plans are that we should be able to continue this 1.5x growth versus industry growth. Right. Or mm. All right. Uh, Sunil, hi. Good morning. Prashant here. Uh, you know, I, I'm reading that uh, you, you said that EV-specific components annual order size uh, is uh, gone up to about 820 crores. Uh, could you explain this? I mean, uh, in simple terms, what does this mean? Uh, yeah. Just put so, this in perspective. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So these are EV specific components. So just to uh, take a step back, if you see our product profile, like switches, lamps, wheels, blow molding products, acoustics, etc., telematics, all these products which we have, they are agnostic to IC or EV. So the transition from IC engine to EV is is not impacting us at all. So we have been working for last many years in terms of building that. Uh, profile for EV specific components, right? And we have built a, a unmatchable product profile in the two wheeler and three wheeler EV category. And this 800 odd crores number which you are speaking, that is specifically for the EV components, not about the existing, which also goes into EV. And this uh, volume of or, or the revenue which we are talking about, that is expected to peak in 25, 26. Uh, and that's what we have been guided by our uh, customers. And the, yes, uh, there is a, a one uh, factor which is in case market penetrations is faster it can happen even before that so definitely it builds a lot of assumption in terms of the industry penetration and the guidance which you get from our customers and this uh, revenue number is specifically for ev components for as i said 25 26. okay you had earlier guided for 11 to 12 percent margins for the full year fy 23 when we spoke to you last but now that metal prices have cooled off raw materials in general are moving lower you think you could do better than that guidance of more than 12 percent perhaps by the end of the year and in the start of fy24 so sonia i think we need to again take a step back so when the commodity prices were going up our endeavor has consistently been that we should be able to pass through to our customer all the commodity price volatility and we have been very successful in that almost 90 95 percent of our commodities are now passed through to our customers so i'm sure you'll appreciate that when the prices come down also, it has to be passed on back to the customers. So we don't uh, intend to benefit for that. Yes, you can see some impact on quarter to quarter basis because when you get compensated by your customer, it is maybe a, a lag of a quarter, etc. So when you go into Q4, you actually will get pricing of Q3 and something like it, right? So you don't expect to gain a lot out of this commodity softening, softening the same way when the prices were going up. So it, it works both ways. Mm. Hi, Sunil. Good morning. Sunil, I want to focus on the airbags division. 
you know, that's going to be the big push and that's going to be the big growth driver as well. So give us yes. a couple of numbers out there. Uh, as of now, going by the investments that you all have done, how geared up are you all for this opportunity? At peak revenues, what can you generate from airbags? And as a percentage of industry size, where do you see, uh, you know, your market share headed? Yeah. So, Nigel, as you would have observed that uh, the board has also approved an investment of 175 crores yesterday for yes. increasing the capacity for airbags. So, this investment will uh, build an incremental capacity of roughly 350 crores of revenue per year. And in addition right. to existing, we should be able to do somewhere around 7 to 800 crore kind of uh, revenue for airbags. And from industry perspective, this will be uh, roughly, uh, roughly around 20-25% uh, to 25 kind of uh, uh, revenue potential in the segment. So including this 350 crores, which will come on stream, uh, you know, two, uh, two times your investment, your total potential is around 750 to 800 crores from airbags. Right. Don't right. you think uh, there's a bigger opportunity out there? Uh, you know, 175 crores, I mean, it's a decent number. But yeah. since that's going to be a big growth driver, growth potential out there, would you want to put some more money over there? So, uh, Nigel, if you would have seen the past many years, right, first you have a driver airbag becoming mandatory, then you have the passenger airbag became mandatory, then there is this regulation which has been uh, talked uh, for the last two years. A lot of vehicles have already launched airbags, uh, vehicle with airbags uh, of almost like four airbags in a lower segment. The higher C and D segment were anyway getting four to six to eight airbags. It was only in the A and B segment where this penetration was low. And there also in the last couple of years, you would have seen a lot of model launches have already built in this. So the incremental opportunity is only in the A segment. And that is what we are now targeting mm -hmm. over by the incremental capex. Okay. Uh, you know, 25% of your revenues comes from the lighting business. And in your presentation, you mentioned that your four-wheeler lighting plant at Gujarat is now ramping up. Once this ramp up is complete, how much could your quarterly revenue run rate rise to? Currently, in any case, your lighting business revenue run rate is at about 650 crores per quarter. Last year, it was about 450-500 odd crores. How much can you take this up to once the ramp up is complete in Gujarat? Yeah. So, uh, it's not only uh, Gujarat, Sonia. If you remember last board meeting, uh, the board has also approved setting up of a new plant with an investment of roughly 400 crores, for which the location is yet to be finalized. So, this is the segment where we are very, very bullish, specifically in the four-wheeler lighting segment. And uh, this space, uh, if you split four-wheeler and two-wheeler, we are already like a fourth or a quarter of a market share in uh, two-wheeler lighting segment. But in four-wheeler, we were uh, low, maybe around 13 to 15 percent. And that's where we see a big potential for growth. In terms of numbers, uh, as you mentioned, 650 crore, definitely it can be significantly higher. Uh, our internal target is in the next, in next five years, we should grow somewhere between uh, 900 to 1000 crore at least uh, in on a quarterly run rate basis and i'm pretty confident that as time moves on we'll build in more opportunities to grow this even further all right uh, so we'll leave it there thank you very much it's always a good conversation uh, and always optimistic about